Good afternoon, and thank you for joining us today. I'm Taylor Combluzier, a mining analyst at Red Cloud Securities. Today's webinar features Corex Copper, which holds 100% interest in the Hybe Copper deposit in the south of Namibia, which is one of the largest undeveloped copper deposits in Africa. The PEA shows that at $3 per pound copper, it generates an after-tax MPV of $950 million and an after-tax IRR of 30%. At $4 per pound copper, that generates an after-tax MPV of $1.65 uh, billion and an after-tax IRR of 42%. The company is focused on developing HYBE and is conducting a drill campaign to further delineate the higher grade zone of the deposit as well as various metallurgical studies. The company also has an option to acquire an 80% interest in three exploration licenses in the heart of the Zambian copper belt. Today, I have with me on the webinar, Pierre Levé, who's the President and Chief Executive Officer at Quarks Copper. Great to have you with us, Pierre. Thank you. I'm pleased to be there with you. So the format of today's webinar will be comprised of two parts. In the first, Pierre will provide an introduction if you're new to the story and an update on Quarks Copper, as well as give a look at the work that's being conducted right now, as well as what you have to look forward to through 2024. In the second part of the webinar, we'll take your questions live, so please send them in using the chat and we'll get to as many as we can. You can type them into the chat box at any time throughout the presentation. So to start, we'll handle the disclosures and then dive into the presentation. So for Corex Copper, there may be some forward-looking statements on this call. I would direct listeners to the cautionary note on page two of the Corex corporate presentation located on the company's website. For Red Cloud Securities, Inc., I would highlight that this webinar is for information purposes only and should not be cons uh, considered a solicitation to purchase or sell securities or a recommendation to buy or sell securities. And we note that this call does not take into account the particular situation or needs of individual investors. Participants should rely on their own investigations and seek their own professional advice before investment. Please see our most recent research located on our website for Corex Copper specific disclosures. So with that out of the way, I'll turn it over to Pierre. Uh, to tell you about the story. Thank you, Taylor. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, Corex Copper, as uh, you know, has been mentioned, we have uh, licenses in uh, the Hype Copper project in the south of Namibia, and the uh, uh, three licenses in, right in the art of the Copper Belt, 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 Belt uh, in Zambia, which is one of the most prolific Copper Belt in the world. Uh, HYBE is a well-advanced project. Uh, we have a PA done. We're, we're, we have a, a quite large resource already uh, delineated at 850 million tons of ore at an average of 0.31% copper. Uh, the 0.31% yeah, copper in the indicated section. Uh, and uh, in Zambia, it's more green field. We, we are starting from, uh, you know, from scratch and we have recently completed uh, some soil sampling and geophysical survey. I'll give you a little bit more uh, during the presentation. Now, why to in why invest in Corex Copper? First of all, this copper is probably the most important, uh, one of the most important uh, metal to follow in the next 10, 20, even 30 years. Uh, it's, uh, we're, we're, you know, uh, we're, we're entering in a period where copper will be needed more and more and production is lowering down. So it's uh, certainly, uh, you know, that the price will soar. Um, we uh, are in prime lo location in very mining fr friendly jurisdiction. Uh, we have substantial exploration upside. Uh, we also have a highly experienced management team and technical team uh, specialized in the, in the southern part of Africa. The uh, company has 207 million shares issued, about $500,000 in cash. We are currently, we have no debt. Uh, we are cu currently uh, have a drilling program that is nearly fully paid. So uh, uh, that's going to, you know, that's going to go for a little while. Our largest shareholder is Tech Resources with 12%. Institutional investors hold about 9%. Um, I will not go in all a big explanation about, uh, you know, the copper. I think everyone knows what's coming for copper, but suffice to say that copper is number one commodity for at least the next 30 years. Without copper, you don't have any uh, transportation. You don't have any communication. You don't have any cloud storage, no data storage. 
Uh, copper is involved everywhere in, in uh, infrastructure projects, so it's a very important commodity. And now we see that the uh, supply is in a strong decline, decline for many reasons, but there's not enough new mine uh, that are coming to production soon enough to balance out the demand uh, versus the supply that is uh, that is going down. So it's uh, you know, copper is going to certainly uh, perform extremely well over the next. Uh, as I said, at least 30 years. Uh, copper is also involved in, you know, as I many uh, um, many are you know in, on the industrial side more than any other metal. So it's a very critical metal. Uh, the hype copper is situated in the in the south of uh, Namibia. It's a very large uh, license. It's 370 square kilometers. We're very uh, near a very uh, a highway, water, not too far from uh, from power lines. So it's structure wise, it's extremely well situated. Uh, we have a strong PEA that has been uh, issued in 2021. We'll look at that a little bit later. Uh, just to show you where it's situated, it's completely in the south of Namibia, near the Orange River that makes the border with South Africa. Uh, that's where also we will pump water for the uh, the operation. We can pump it and pipeline it on about 15 kilometers. So uh, it's a pair, you know it's a quite good setup. The main commercial road uh, crossing all Namibia coming from Cape Town in South Africa is crossing the western edge of our license. There's a lower there's a low grade uh, low power uh, uh, grid uh, along that road. There's a high uh, high voltage power grid about 80 kilometers to the east so uh it's uh you know it's from our pea and our uh, analysis so far it's not going to be a big problem to bring the power to that uh, to the, the hype site um and the other thing also it's a very sunny area uh, we're talking about an average of 320 days per uh, of sun per annum uh so you would not be surprised to know that we will look at the uh, potential uh, solar power. Uh, from what we looked so far, we think it could be a, an hybrid system where we have a part from the solar system and a part from the grid. Um, the uh, the deposit exists, is known since many years. It has the first exploration, systematic exploration program have been carried out by Rio Tinto early in the 1970s. They've drilled uh, 45,000 meters. They've done you know, uh, modeling, quite a lot of soil sampling, surveying, uh, mapping. We have all that in our data room. Uh, and uh, it went up to other companies uh, in the, the mid-90s. I've done, MinProc of Australia has done a feasibility study. Uh, also, Tech uh, was holding 70% of the project between 2008 and 2017, uh, and they've done also another 14,000 meters of drilling plus geophysical survey sampling, some metallurgical test work. So we have a, a very important database about that project. Um, it's considered as a porphyry typical to what we see mainly in the Andes and Chile and Peru. Uh, and uh, in general, these these deposits, uh, the grades are not controlled by structures. And the the way that most of the companies like to develop that is to drill vertical, all wide space by 150 meters to mainly chase tonnage, uh, and they look for bulk mining. So they don't bother too much about the grade until they arrive to feasibility study when they want to start really organizing the resource management. And uh, that's what has happened on that project. And the resource is estimated from surface to down to 350 meters. Uh, the indicated is uh, surface 220 meters. Uh, but as you can see on that little uh, cross section, you can see that most of the, uh, uh, the uh, drilling is done vertical. When we took over the project in May 2017, we uh, uh, walked the the project, and uh, our VP exploration has started looking at the, uh, you know, many structure you were seeing at surface. It was very easy to uh, see shears, faults, uh, uh, quartz vein, and uh, we realized that they have never been identified or mapped anywhere. So we decided to map these structures, and that this is what 
it gives on that sketch here, this map of the uh, footprint of the center of the deposit, what you can see all these black lines are these structures uh, that have been, that we have identified. And uh, when we plotted the, the drilling result on top of it, the assay result on top of that map, we realized that everywhere there's a structure, there's higher grade. So we, we thought at that moment that you know, definitely there was, you know, certainly the grade, most probably the grade was uh, uh, controlled by these structures. And uh, it may be that the, you know, the, the grade has been underestimated by the type of drilling they were doing. One of the important, uh, uh, another important matter is that most of these structures are vertical or sub-vertical. So when you drill vertical hole, very wide space, for sure they have missed quite a lot of that material. So we decided to test the, uh, the concept in drilling incline holes across these, uh, these structures. And immediately we have started saying, seeing, you know, some, some uh, results like 0.47% copper equivalent over 150 meters, including 30 meters at 0.81%. It was like this nearly every hole, uh, up to between 0.40% up to 2.35% uh, uh, copper equivalent and uh, on extension that goes up to 200 meters. So very wide extension and a grade always way over the average. The average is 0.31% copper and we're not in that territory anymore. So that has def definitely showed that uh, we were on the right track to increase the, uh, the grade and that the grade was underestimated by previous uh, uh, drilling programs. Uh, the other thing that we have seen also is that in on that sketch you see the footprint of the center of the deposit you can see that the uh, area uh, when Minproc did a feasibility study in the 1990s they have organized let's say the you know these four pits in the center of the deposit and what we and they were even accepted as such by uh, tech resources but when we drilled these incline holes and sometime between the uh, the pits we realized that in some areas there's more high grade material between the pits than in the pit. So uh, we will do, a, we're doing a, a drilling program at the moment of 5,000 meters that will be completed at the end of March, early April. Uh, so we will have results going out uh, up to uh, mid or end of April. And then after that, the MSA group of South Africa will do a new 43101 resource estimation. And that model that we see there will certainly evolve in, in another direction. So. Uh, Two things are coming on that drilling program is that uh, we will have a resource estimation and we will have new modeling, uh, which is quite important. And of course, we expect to have a, uh, you know, a far better grade than 0.31% copper. Uh, the other point also that was important for us is that being a, a, a low grade project, uh, the idea was to look to find a technology that can extract them, you know, unable to extract the metal at low capex and low opex. And uh, in all the database we have, we found some reports done in the, in the 90s, uh, one by the Witwatersrand University of uh, South Africa and two done by Mintech of South Africa, which is a, a renowned uh, hydrometallurgist uh, you know, consulting firm. Um, and they have tested bio-assisted e-pleaching. What is it? What it is, is it's a, a simple sulfuric acid heat leaching in which you add bacterias and that strain of bacteria will, will force the oxidation of the sulfide because mainly that project is mainly sulfide, primary sulfide, it will force the oxidation and then it speed up the, uh, the, uh, the uh, reaction or, or for the leaching. So it leaches faster. So it's just a simple met method to uh, speed up the uh, the leaching uh, uh, the leaching time, and uh, to it's not a new technology. It's used by mostly by majors in combination with other technology in the Andes and Chile and Peru. Uh, Codelco used that on on all of their projects. Um, we started looking at that, and we realized that uh, to have a successful operation with uh, bio leaching. There's a certain number of parameters that are important. Uh, the, uh, you need to have heat in the environment because you need uh, 
you need heat, you need warm, you know, the, the, in the stack where you pile the gravel, you need to have a certain uh, temperature to make the, uh, uh, the activity of the bacteria optimal. Uh, we have one of the hottest places on the planet. It's you know it's it goes up to fifty degrees that day in some period of the of the year. Uh, so it's uh, on that side. It's, it was not a question. The other thing you need also is to have over three percent pyrite in the system in the in the ore uh, to because pyrite is uh, when it's leaching, it self generate energy, so it self generate heat. And also, it's uh, it's converted into sulfuric acid, so it uh, it reduces the uh, the uh, need of sulfur sulfuric acid from outside sources. Uh, you need to have a simple mineralogy because uh, deleterious material can create big problems. There's no deleterious mat material in that uh, in the ore. It's 98.5 percent chalcopyrite, 1 percent bornite, and uh, there's no deleterious elements such as borium. Uh, um, arsenic. Um, so we were ticking all the boxes. You know, you don't, you need, you don't need to be at too high altitude to have a better content in oxygen. It's our case. So we decided then to test our own, uh, our own, you know, sample, and we tested one million ton, which is a pretty decent size to to make a pre, you know a first test to see if it works. And uh, we we what we've decided to do is to do three. Uh, sequences of crushing, bringing the material down to 10 millimeters. And then instead of using grinding and milling, which are high capex and, uh, you know, very high opex because it's uh, it's uh, very energy demanding, uh, we've tested the um, uh, high pressure grinding rollers and that works extremely well. We reduced the uh, material down to, uh, to five millimeters and below. And then we, uh, we went to the uh, bio leaching and we extracted we, we had very, very good recoveries. Again, 95, 96% over 140 days. So that's, that's very, very good recoveries. Now, we have decided after we have, uh, we have based on these results and the resource estimation we're having, we have completed the PEA that has been uh, published in February, 2021. And uh, from that point, uh, after we've published the PEA, we've decided also to add a flotation and roast leaching in that flow sheet uh, to, to uh, um, treat the, 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 the fine material. Everything below 2.5 millimeters is now going to flotation and roast leaching, and it has an advantage of being uh, faster to generate cash flow, and uh, you don't need to agglomerate these fine material and so on. So, so it's it's probably a, you know, a very good, not probably, it's a very good uh, option to uh, extract most of the uh, the copper from the uh, from that uh, from that ore. The PEA that we have published in 2021 showed very strong potential economics. Um, we used only the indicated resource. At the time, it was 450 uh, million ton at 0.31% copper because that's the NI43101 resource that we were having. Uh, the strip ratio, 141 to 1, it's a very good stripping ratio. We used 80% uh, as copper recovery. You will tell me that it's it's uh, smaller than the 95% that we were having with the uh, with the test. That's true, but when you do column testing, and it's, uh, it's not exactly the same than when you do you know, when you do it on stack uh, on site. So we know that in the real world, in uh, 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 no a large commercial operation, we will you know the rule of thumb is that we will lose about five to seven percent. So we have decided to be more conservative and uh, bring it down to eighty percent. And uh, uh, the, the cash cost for the operation was one dollar thirty-four per pound of copper, and the capex three hundred forty-one million dollars U.S. On the left-hand side, you will see that the results of that PEA, the uh, economics are extremely good. It's uh, copper price at let's say we will take three dollar fifty per pound of copper. We're above that that uh, number since at least two years now. Uh, so the after-tax NPV is one point three billion dollars U.S and the uh, IRR after tax 36%. It's very, very good numbers. Now, since 2021, there was inflation. Uh, we have also decided to add flotation and roast leaching for a part of the, uh, the treatment. Uh, all of this will certainly change the economics. 
our estimation now is that we will have a capex at around 500 to 550 million dollars so technically we would think that it would reduce the economics but on the other side we will have a, a higher grade so it may at the end of the day be possible that we will keep around the, we think we will be around the same economics uh, so higher capex but uh, higher grade so it's it's going to you know stay as a very uh, very interesting project on the economic side it's not often that you will see a project is of that magnitude in a, a small junior company uh, like corex so it's an opportunity to participate in uh, in a, a very uh, strong uh, you know potential added value that to come in the next months and the next year we also have these three licenses in uh, Zambia. We're right in the middle of the Copper Belt. We have 752 square kilometers, which is a very uh, large uh, land holding in that uh, in that you know in that part of the the world. It's uh, you know Zambia is a very important uh, mining uh, country. There's 14 very large mines, copper mine there, uh, operating. There's a, a substantial exploration uh, upside in still in the area. Uh, you know, all the majors are there: Barrick, First Quantum, Rio Tinto, Glencore, uh, Vedanta. So it's uh, a very important mining country. Now you can see that we're right in the middle of the Copper Belt. Uh, the project that is the most important one for us at the moment is Luanshia West. Um, we have. Uh, what you can see there is that the license on the left-hand side of that map, it's, it's on the same geology than a, a, a very large mine called Luantia, which is about 25 kilometers from uh, Luantia West, and it's on the same geology. Uh, we have done some soil sampling last year, a little bit over 2,000 samples, and uh, we have discovered on Luantia West uh, 10 major copper anomalies and 13 major copper anomalies. That's the anomalies that we have delineated over the uh, the project. And uh, in general, the uh, the four IS copper assays are, you know, from 506 ppm to 634 ppm copper. Uh, it's it's uh, very high grade. When you look at the, let's say, the, the, no the background noise of, uh, of Zambia, in general, you will find 150 ppm to 450 ppm. So when your peak values are higher, you're in good territories. That's the same for cobalt. Uh, the average in general in the in the country is 50 ppm, and we're right about that. I think it's 49 ppm our our average. So we're right there. So we the first work that we have done is pointing in the right direction, maybe for a discovery. Uh, we. Uh, we also have recently completed the geophysical survey over these anomalies that you see there. And the, the, the reason why we, we carried out that geophysical survey is to uh, confirm the anomalies because now we have uh, surface soil sampling. Now we, we want to see if we confirm that at depth. And we need to know also the depth of these, uh, these anomalies because uh, uh, we will now put together uh, drilling targets uh if everything goes right we would like to drill in 2024 at some point in time so uh it's not a big program for the start it's probably about 2000 meters but uh, the, the 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 drilling will be there to uh confirm that the anomalies you know worth doing more drilling <laughs> and develop them uh the Ampangwe project is uh, in the south of Luanchi. I was just show you it's a very huge area, 675 square kilometers, but it's still a very green field. Uh we we uh, hope to start uh, doing some sampling uh, in 2024 on it. So basically we are currently drilling up to 5000 meters. We've just started issuing some drilling results last week that were very good uh, you know they were going up from uh, the average on 202 meters uh, were was at the 0.49 percent copper equivalent with a, a peak at uh, four meters at 2.37 percent so it's a, a very very good result uh we uh we normally we should complete that 5000 meters uh, at the end of march early april we will have that resource estimation uh, starting right after to be, you know, the, the disclosed probably in May. 
Um, the uh, we will also from the from the drilling from the cores that we have. Uh, we will have get from the uh, extracted from the uh, drilling program. We will use a part of that to uh, resume some uh, metallurgical test work with the bio weak leaching, HPDR, flotation, and rose leaching. Um, the, uh, also, we have uh, started a uh, in October last year a uh, environmental, environmental and social impact assessment. Uh, we intend to apply for a mining lease in about two years and a half time, and uh, that's one of the critical uh, report that we need uh, to go with the uh, the application. So uh, we will have that in place in probably a little bit over than a year. Uh, it's a long procedure to do these uh, these assessments. So you need to cover a full year to cover all the seasons. And uh, so uh, it, uh, it was preferable to start early. And in Zambia, uh, soon we will have the interpretation of the uh, uh, of the uh, geophysical survey with uh, a 3D model, and we'll have our drilling targets, hopefully to start in 2024. So that's uh, that's the uh, the story of uh, Corex Copper. As I said uh, a little bit earlier, it's uh, a very good opportunity to participate in a potential serious, a very, very serious added value uh, uh, because we are changing the nature of that uh, of, of the resource that we're having in drilling it differently and in having a different vision of the geology. And that pays off so far because we're, we're you know, demonstrating that the, the grade was uh, seriously underestimated. So from that, we, uh, we estimate that we will have a, a very good period. We will have news, news uh, on, the, the, you know, on the drilling result about every three weeks up to the end of April. Perfect. Thanks a lot, Pierre. Great presentation. Um, now we will uh, turn to the Q&A portion of the webinar. And just a reminder to everybody on the line that you can type your questions in at any point. Uh, with that said, we have a few that have come in here. Um, just wondering, you, you talked about copper equivalent. Uh, we have somebody just wondering, what's the other metal and can you extract it via leaching? Uh, the other metal is uh, molly, molybdenum. Uh, it counts for about probably 10% of the resource. Uh, we will know at our resource uh, estimation because it has never been included in, uh, you know, the only company that has assayed for Mali in the past was Tech. So we have 14,000 meters plus 5,000 that we have drilled in 2021 uh, where we have Mali. So maybe Mali can be extracted with the, yes, Mali will be able to be extracted by the bio leaching, but after that in the liquor, we will have to have another uh, uh, separate operation to uh, extract the molly from the liquor. Perfect. OK. Um, so I think that uh, kind of answers uh, the, the kind of follow up question there. I guess you would plan to include that uh, in, in an updated resource. To... Yes. Perfect. OK. Um, and then uh, we have a question here uh, just wondering, uh, how strong is your tenement holding at Hive now after the problems of the last couple of years? Right, it's good as it's always been. <laughs> now, uh, but joke apart, we have a, a very good relation with the Ministry of Mines compared to, it's not that we were having a bad relation before. Now the story is known, there was some individual that have tried to hijack licenses from companies and you know, in convincing the minister to not renew licenses and then issue these licenses to some of their friends. They have been caught and they have been fired. They're not at the... You know, they're not with the ministry anymore. The, the new people that have replaced them have completely different uh, way of working, and we have very good relation with them. And we're, we're we we feel comfortable that we will renew the license uh, in two years' time without any problem. But we we will go also to apply for a mining license uh, because the project is advanced enough to look at the mining license. And also because it will protect the you know the license for 25 years, you know, which is easier than having to renew every two years. But we feel very comfortable with what we have. I've been in Namibia since 1996, and I can tell you I've never seen what happened to us before. It was really anecdotal to that year 2021. Perfect. Okay. Um, and and on that same note, as you you mentioned, uh, advancing. Um, uh, 
the, the permitting. Um, have you started any work in terms of the uh, baseline um, data collection process? Uh, uh, what do you mean baseline? Uh, like environmental and monitoring and, and yeah, 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 yeah. We we have started the environmental and social impact study in in October, uh, so they have now uh, archaeology has been done. Uh, there was something done with the water. There was uh, uh, also biology, zoology has been done. Um, so there's there's quite a lot of data collection that is has already been done, and there's still some on the go. So. Uh, it's very important to start early because, it, uh, as I said, it took just to collect the data. It took 12 months because you need to cover all the seasons. And then after that, to produce the reports and so on, it takes another at least six months. Right. Perfect. OK, um, we have a question here. Just wondering um, if Corex is also targeting to acquire any other exploration licenses across Namibia. Uh, we're open. We're always looking. Uh, we never know. See, you know, there, there's uh, at the moment we don't have anything in front of us where it attracts our interest enough. Uh, but if something points and uh, we, you know, we have a very good, uh, very good, an interesting license for us in the way that we look at the, you know, exploring and developing project. Of course, we're very open. Great. Okay. Um... And then, uh, I guess on high PR, are you looking for partners prior to production? Eventually, yes. Uh, we have already started, you know, talking to uh, private equity funds. Uh, we we talked to some majors. There's some interest. It's always long with uh, with these groups. But keep in mind one thing: that's a, a project that will have a capex of at least five hundred million dollars US, and our our cap our market cap at the moment is about twelve million. Even if we go to a market cap of 100 million, which is quite possible because we have a PEA that dictates that we can have a value as high as that, uh, even there, we will still need a partner to uh, to fund and get started on the uh, on the project. But at some point in time, don't be surprised that we arrive with, as I said, a private equity fund or or a major mining company. Right. Yeah. It's not sense. an emergency at this point in time. Yeah. <laughs> but it's a big project. So at some point in time, it will be uh, for the like of a, of a larger group. Yeah. Makes sense. Okay. Um, okay. I'm just flipping through the questions here. I think we've we've touched on most of them here. Um, uh, so maybe I'll just give you kind of a minute to to give the the final pitch or you know top three reasons to to invest in Corex uh, and let. Uh, any viewers submit final questions you're good thanks um investing at corex uh, you know the main reason to do that first we have a long experience with namibia and zambia we have a team highly experienced in technically and financially speaking in that part of the world uh so uh, even if we had that problem with uh, with namibia we're confident we can resolve these problems and we resolved it and namibia has shown that that uh, you know the rule of law prevail in their countries so we're very comfortable so we're we're a very strong team we're in a very good country same for zambia and on top of that we're on our way to change the face of the hyde copper project with very with a, a substantial increase in grade uh the vision that we had uh, to, to uh, explore it has made a huge difference and that means a lot of added value coming from now on so that's a, a right, a very good timing to uh, to consider uh, Corex as an investment, and it's copper. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. good uh, long-term fundamentals uh, for the metal. So yes, yeah. perfect. Okay, uh, with that, we did we did have one final question come in, so I'll just read it out here. Uh, are there any uh, copper mines uh, around the world which use bioassisted heat bleaching as the main extraction technique uh, that you could point to investors to to check out? um okay everywhere they use uh, uh bio leaching it's in combination with other technology so in some it's more important in some it's less important but you see that mainly in all the mines of Codelco in uh in chile are using bio heat bleaching um you can see also that uh, tech resources was using that in Cuebra da blanca in uh in chile but now because they're deeper they're in the primary sulfide very deep horizon, they have changed their extraction technology. 
Uh, the uh, you also see uh, Boladin, who has a, that has a mine in uh, in Sweden, uh, that mines strictly on bioleaching since many years, since, since the 1970s, on a project that has a grade of 0.23 percent in average. So it's uh, that's also one very important that you can look at. There's a private company at the moment that is called Jetty Resources. There's not a lot of information on them, but at least you can find their, their website and see a little bit what they're doing. They're very, uh, uh, they're strongly supported by uh, BHP and uh, Freeport McMoran, and they're testing a bioleaching technology on two projects, one of BHP and the other one of, uh, of um, uh, Freeport in the United States. I don't remember the name of the project, but if you look at Jetty Resources, find them, find their their website. You will see, uh, uh, and you can find a little bit of information about uh, you know bio leaching technology. Perfect. Okay, um, so I don't see any other questions that have come in, so I think we'll we'll wrap it up and, and leave it there. Uh, so I would like to thank Pierre from Corex Copper for taking the time to host the webinar today with Red Cloud Securities, and thank you to everybody on the line for tuning in with us. Thank you, Taylor. Thank you all to attend. Have a nice day.